Hi, this is Mark, welcome back to the channel. Today's episode, I'm gonna take a closer look at some of the hand tools I've shown you in prior videos. Uh, I've had a few comments that I was a bit away from the camera, you didn't really get a good look at what I was trying to show you. So I've put them on the desk, I've run through one or two of the hand tools I've talked about before. Bit of a closer look, see how they work in um, a little bit of a speeded up video. And as I've said in those comments, I'm gonna show a lot more of these tools out on site as we get a little bit better of filming and getting footage. Obviously this is a learning curve for me as well. So I'm hoping we're gonna improve the YouTube as we go along and um, we'll show you some of these tools in use. But I thought I'd go through it really quick, just on the desk and a bit of a close up look for those who are interested. So enjoy, please like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for watching and see you on the next one. So welcome back to the channel. I've had a couple of comments come across about looking at some of these tools uh, more closely. And that's what I wanna to do today. So I'm gonna try and string a video together and um, show some of them in operation where I can. Uh, very briefly as a bit of a sped up video so this doesn't turn into some um, hour and hour long look at tools we'll start with this one so this is the weha or weha however we're saying it um, spirit level again you saw me demo this before but this is a closer look at it so you've got the movable lugs um, so you can space your holes um, for back box marking and level at this end level at this end a bit further away you can see the measurements on there well, the level of the desk is oh, it's not bad actually bit of a surprise um, so yeah you've got that one there very straightforward so once you know your distance between your your holes you can set these exactly where you need them get a laser on the on the wall or some reference line to work off and away you go with that one so pop that to one side um, what else have we got to look at so there's this one this is from Klein and again you release that spins around you get the other heads for these as well handles on these are fantastic it's VDE really nice mechanism for popping the blades around watch this just pops itself out like that something satisfying about that for a strange reason but there's that one and the heads on these are really um, solid sharp well constructed so that's that one what else shall we look at uh, let's have another look at a Klein one closer up so these are the um, pliers you can see here they've got the, the crimp pole there. don't know all that's coming up. You can see there there's the crimp, there's the cutting face, and then the plier end. And again, the, the two-turn insulation that I spoke about before. So when you're seeing that white layer anywhere on the handle, you know it's time to, to be thinking about not using it anymore. So that one there. Uh, let's swap to a different manufacturer. So we've got these from Nipex. And these are the um, pipe cutting, so your conduit cutter. You can see there, nice sharp edge, and that cuts straight through conduit like butter. Nice little lock so it doesn't pop open in your bag and uh, cut anything it shouldn't be. So you can see those there, nice close up view with the part number. That's them ones. Uh, what else have we got? Let's have another bit of Nipex. So we've got these from Nipex. These are your Strippers, they'll strip out a sheaf of twin and earth and the inner car conductors. Cable slots straight through the middle so you can set your length, strip the ends. These are great for um, spotlights with the push fit uh, termination. So you can strip your end, stick your sheathing on for your CPC and push them straight in. Job done, away to the next one. So a really nice tool, those ones. Pop those to one side. Uh, we've got these. Pop these in the video. These are from Weir or Weha. These are the Pico uh, screwdrivers. So these are for your smaller terminations that you might find inside um, a boiler, for example, or an alarm panel. Always good to have a set of them in your bag. Nice uh, swivelly end, uh, free spools. Always good on small screwdrivers. Pop those to one side. Oh, we've got the Speedy. I'm still looking to get version two of this. You can see there, and I've combined it here if I put that closer up you can see that's the um, oh, I ain't got my glasses on that's <laughs> 2.8 newton meter on that one and uh, yeah so you pop your bit in the end of that it actually comes apart into three pieces when you're using it with the um, torque driver I just have to come away from the camera to grab hold of that and pull it out there we go that's a tight fitting as you would want really you don't want these falling out you can see there if I pop that back in, let's line it up and away we go. So that's in nice and secure now. And then the bit in the end, 
again, nice and secure. Battery lives under here. So, see if I can twist it off. And that's, uh, you get two, well I got two in my kit of these so you can keep one charged up at all times. So you're never going to run flat and it shouldn't, you shouldn't expect it to be able to fully drive home a, a screw or a fix in or anything like that because it won't. It's just for uh, spinning in the first rotations on a, on a cage clamp or a, a back box and then you make the final tightening by hand as you normally would. So you're not damaging the connection. Got some side cutters, these again from Klein, nice sharp cutting face in a white layer of insulation. Quickly move on from these ones. It does what it says on the tin. These ones from Klein, so these are more automatic wire strippers. So you've got the cutting face in here. And that's how you strip the ends of your cable. So again, you can strip outer insulation and inner insulation with these. There's a adjustment for the, the length that you're going to strip there if you've got a lot of repeat work to do. And you can adjust the depth and tightness on all of those with these adjusting uh, fixing screws here. So that's them. And then the climb ones are especially solid. The other manufacturers have variants of these, um, but these are my favourites. What else have we got? Let's have a look in this one. So this is a little kit, again from Weir. And this one, uh, I've had a long, long time. So you've got the, the long handle holder there, which I tend not to use because it, these either get combined in the Speedy or the um, torque driver I'm going to show you in a minute. But there's a little stubby one there as well. And that's for if you're working in a tight spot, you can push your drivers in there and you get a whole selection of ends for any and every scenario. So there's some quite small ones in there all the way up to your big um, cage clamp on MCBs and uh, your fixings on your neutral and earth bars these from Nipex. So these when I first saw them it was like oh I'm never going to use them really and I use them quite a lot so you've got your, your end for long nose pliers, you have got a little crimp, I don't know if you can see that there if I try and get it in the right light, let's give it a go, there we go so you can see there's a crimp for 0 0.5 to 2.5 um, in there and then you put your cutting faces for 0 0.7 to 1.5 mil and then your 2.5 mil hole and then there's a cutting end here uh, and you can see I've actually tried to cut a back box screw with these and um, damage the cutting face. But that was user stupidity for being too lazy to go and get the right tool. Uh, it's no fault in the tool itself. And it still cuts cable just fine, even though I've made a mess of the, the cutting face. And uh, yeah, nice solid handles, VDE again. And these are always good to have on your second fixing because you can do a lot of um, jobs with one tool. Always a good thing. One of my most recent additions and, and the new favourite cropper, due to my small hands, are these from uh, Weha or Weha. And you can see there you've got the cutting serrated face and also the hole there to strip um, your cables. And you'll see that in the little fast forward video I'm going to be doing in after this one, hopefully, if it all comes together in the edit. Again, VDE handles, real nice smooth opening, fit in your hand really well. These will cut tails, so 25mm tails in standard domestic board, these will cut them just fine. The um, pack a punch for the size. So I like those. Also got a stripping knife. So this is the one with the hooked blade. That's for taking your insulation off. Um, outer insulation. So I like those from Nipex. Fairly straightforward tool. Uh, what else have we got? So there's this one. I showed this on another video but at a distance. So we'll see if I can get my gloves in and get it out. Uh, this is going to be a challenge. Pop the glove off a minute. So that's the bits of the kit out of the box. And um, it's the digital torque driver. So you get the end here that slots in, clips in. Power button to turn it on. So I'll just do that now. And then the digital display on the other side. I don't know how quite. Oh, that's coming up on camera, but this goes up to 5 newton meters. I think it's set to 3.3 without my glasses on. And again, you can simply press the end in and rotate to adjust the torque, which I'll have to do off camera because I'm knocking it. So, 
just turn it back on. There we go. I pop the end out and you rotate it to adjust the torque. You can see that's popped up to 3.72, 3.92, and simply press it back in to lock it. And away you go with your torque terminations of whatever value you're using. So that's that one. We get a power button on the back. Battery in these isn't user serviceable, so it has to go away for an annual calibration anyway, and they'll check that out at that time. The one from yesterday is this. So this was yesterday's video that got released. I don't know the time difference between when it might appear again. But this is um, just a little... It's like a variant of a junior hacksaw, but it feels a bit more solid than, um, than normal. And I was looking forward to using this on some steel wire armor, so I'm actually going to give it a try, and we'll try and get that demoed in a video. But it's a new tool in the bag, and I like it, so featuring it. Uh, this is one I picked up most recently and it was after seeing, let's push some of this out of the way, the Milwaukee um, digital level but it's a little bit out my budget for the moment having just bought EV kits galore and iPads and everything else. So I've gone for a budget Amazon special and you can see there it's popped straight up in error mode when I've got it laid in the wrong direction so I'm not sure how this is going to show up. You can see there, it just gives you the, the angle. So if I lift up that end, you can see it changing. Likewise that end. It does still have the bubbles in there as well. So you can see this desk's 0 0.15 out, which isn't bad, actually. Let's see if I can use my skills to adjust it by hand. Oh, look at that. That's some stable uh, handwork. Oh, I'm going the wrong way now there oh there and it will also change if I press the mode button to a percentage uh, to an actual measurement so you can see it's saying it's three mil out of level if I lift it up on zero so that's quite nice uh, you can calibrate it as well should you wish to you can um, turn the audio on and off uh, you can hold a figure uh, you can reference a certain level and then work off it. So if you're saying that this is actual um, level rather than what is level. So sometimes you'll be fixing onto a wall and there's other things on there that aren't straight or level and you put your bit of equipment up that is and it just looks odd because everything else is out. You've all been there in some of these older properties and it, it's a case of do you leave it so it looks bad but is straight or do you match it in with what's there? So this gives you the option to do that if you if you need to. And yeah, that's that's it. It was a nice um, nice tool. Batteries in there that you can get access to and change. It feels solid. It's got an aluminium case all around it, rubber ends, and plastic fascia. And this was about I think it was 35, 40 quid. So it wasn't the biggest amount of money to spend. We do also have the the Klein tools um, level. This will go on to, it's magnetic as well I should say, so it will go on to um, steel conduit. So if you're using a conduit bender and you want to set an angle, you can use this. Uh, we use the Klein one, which I will demo in another video as well. Because it's smaller, it's easier to just pop onto the um, bar while you adjust it. This is for, I mean you can use it for that job, but it wasn't why we got it. It goes in a nice little bag. So it's just to show you sometimes some of the specials that you can get um, off Amazon. I mean, it's Chineseium or whatever we're going to call it. Uh, but, you know, it serves its purpose. It's worked well. It's, it's doing a decent job. And um, it goes in my tool bag now. So that's something else that I have in there. Um, yeah, that's quite a selection of hand tools, really, isn't it? So I'm not going to pull any more out for now. But for those of you who are asking for a closer-up look, I hope this video has been of, of use. Thanks for watching.